It's starting. It's a good sign. All right, so today we're going to go over the three questions like what you have um, tomorrow for day one of the test. Okay, um, you're allowed to use your calculator tomorrow, but you also need to show all of your work. Okay, so there's points for work, there's points for answers. Um, if you're, you know, using a graph, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, you need to show it. Okay. Um, I will hand your quiz back today. Right here, so I remember to do that. Okay, and then of course on Thursday we'll go over these other four questions, and then you'll take your test on that on Friday. So you have no homework this week, you know, just preparing, practicing, you know, that sort of thing. All right, so you guys asked for number 35 for this guy right here, and so the first thing says produce the graphs of f that reveal all the important aspects of the curve. And then use the graphs of f prime and f double prime to estimate the intervals of increase and decrease, extreme values, intervals of concavity and inflection points. Um, in exercise 35, use calculus to find these quantities exactly. All right, so as you're doing these, like I said, you're allowed to use your calculator to find the derivative. You don't have to do that by hand. But from what I understand, some of your calculators are very slow. And so I do have some students that are finding the derivative by hand and then from there putting it in for your Y2 and your Y3. You're welcome to do that as well, okay? Of course, you'll have lots of um, open space to, you know, come up with these. So the first thing we're going to do is pull up your calculator. And we're going to go to our Y equals and we're going to type that equation in. Okay. Please use your fraction key when doing this so that you're, you're not putting anything in incorrectly, right? So I have x squared minus 1. In my mind, I look at that and say, hey, that's factorable, x minus 1, x plus 1. It means it's crossing the x-axis at 1 and negative 1. Like, you know, there are some things that just, like, pop into my head. I also see the denominator is an x cubed. That means... Um, and since x can't, if a denominator can't equal zero, if x is zero, that would be an asymptote or a whole. Since it doesn't reduce with the numerator, it means there's an asymptote. So, like, these are things in my mind that are going on as I'm putting this in. Okay, and then I'm just going to press zoom 6 to just graph it from negative 10 to 10. And I can see it's crossing the x-axis at negative 1 and 1. It has an asymptote at um, uh, y equals, uh, or x equals zero right there. It looks like this whole left side, it looks like it's completely increasing, but I can't tell in here what's going on. So we can't always use that first um, graph to determine things because sometimes they're hidden, and that was what we had talked about when we were doing this. So then from there we said, well, what we could do is we could go and we could turn this guy off and then go down here and we could take the derivative of it. So remember we press alpha window and number three to get that derivative. We put an x. Since that first equation's in y1, we press alpha trace enter to get our y1. Like at this point, you should be able to, you know, do these things uh, pretty fluently because you, you know, you practice them. So now from here, when I go and I look at the graph of this, I can see it's not the same as the other graph. Okay, but what is really important to me is where is it hitting the x-axis. And from this, from where I'm at, I cannot tell if it's hitting one or two times, you know, over in these different places. So I probably want to maybe kind of zoom in a little bit. At least, like, none of this is being used down here. What if I get rid of the negative 10 down here and maybe go negative 1 instead? So, you know, sometimes you could just do little parts. Like, my y min, let me just go negative 1. Does that, like, give me any more information than what I had before? And, again... Still, I maybe need to even pull it in from the top as well. All right, so I'm going to go to my window here. What I care about here is where it's hitting the x-axis. That's the most important thing. So if I make my y max, let me just have that go to 2 instead. And now from here, I can see a little bit more about what's happening. Okay. I can see that it looks like it's just going below the x-axis here. It's hitting the x-axis right here, you know. 
So these are the graphs that you should draw on your paper. Like you could graph the first one, graph the second one, graph the, the, the second derivative, the original, the first derivative, second derivative um, on your paper um, to show like your work for this right here. And then I would likely, actually I can cover all of this up, can I? I can just go right underneath it and I can put my number line test. Remember, this is the derivative. So this is f prime of x. Okay. I'm going to find where it's hitting the x-axis here. It looks like it's between negative 2 and negative 1. But to the left of that, it's below the x-axis. And then it looks like there is an asymptote at 0. So I'm going to do this squiggly at 0. Remember, that was something in the first, in the original equation of f of x, but it had that asymptote. So of course, it's a, a derivative doesn't exist there. And then it's hitting uh, between, it looks like, 1 and 2 over here. But it looks like it's above the x-axis in here, and then it's below over here. So I at least kind of have an idea of where it's increasing and decreasing. But I do need to know what those x values are. So I go to calculate, and then 0, and I look between negative 2 and negative 1, and press Enter to go find it. And that gives me the first one, which is, let's put it here, negative 1.732051. And then I need that on this side as well, which is probably the positive of it. It's very much an even function, you know. And so I'm just going to 1.732051. I'll double check to make sure, but I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Calculate 0 between 1 and 2. 1 yeah, it's the same thing. 5, 1. It did give me an extra place, though. It gave me a 5 at the end right there. Not that that really makes a big difference. Okay, so now I can take and I can answer the questions, some of the questions up here. Where is it decreasing? It is decreasing from, oh, sorry, is there anything about that? No, okay, where is it increasing? Now, it's right here that I need to point something out that some of you maybe got a little bit, a half point or something marked off on the quiz, okay? When you have increasing and increasing next to each other, you can combine them together as long as it's like your cubic function kind of thing. You know, where it's a zero right in here, but it's increasing and increasing, but it's smooth. You cannot combine these two together and write it as one interval because it's not defined at zero. This is not smooth in between here. There's an asymptote in between here. So for this right here, for my increasing, I need to say from negative 1.73, to 0 and from 0 to 1.73. If that was just a 0 in the middle and it was smooth and it was connected, yes, but the derivative does not exist at that spot. So it is not increasing at that spot. It is decreasing then from negative infinity to negative 1.73, and then again from 1.73 to infinity. Does it have an absolute max? Well, it doesn't, does it go plus minus anywhere? Now these are absolute max, an absolute min. Think of the original graph that you saw. Does it have an absolute max or min? It's not asking there for relative max or min, but absolute max or min. So let me go back and turn this guy on so you can see that graph, the blue graph. See how it goes up forever and ever? That means there's no absolute max. It goes down forever and ever. There's no absolute min. Okay, so for this one right here, we would have to say none. If it asked relative max or relative min, yes, there are both of those. Um, when x is this, negative 1.73, there's a uh, relative min. You'd have to plug it into the function in order to get it. And there's a relative max when x is positive 1.73. Okay. 
Next, concave up, concave down points of inflection. Well, I need the derivative of that. So now we go back here. We're going to turn this guy back off. Turn this guy off. And then going down here, I'm going to now take the derivative of y2. So we have alpha window number 3, x, y2 is alpha trace number 2, and then x at the end, grab that. And again, you're going to go through the same thing. Pull that picture onto your paper, draw your number line test to see what's going on. A little bit smaller so I can slide it in here too. All right, so for this one right here, our number line, it looks like it's crossing over here. It looks like at zero, there's this la la la. And then again, it's crossing right here. It's below, it's above, it's below, it's above. Yeah. So now I have to find those values where it's crossing. It looks like it's between negative three and negative two. And then again, it's the same on the other side. So you could save yourself some time if you recognize the even odd features of these things. All right, so I'm going to go to calculate. I'm going to go to zero. I'm going to look between negative three and negative two. And it's negative two point four four nine four nine one and positive 2.449491. Okay, now, let me get rid of this for a second. Where is it concave up? It's concave up from negative 2.45 to zero, and again from 2.45 to infinity. And then where is it concave down? from negative infinity to negative 2.45, and then again from zero to zero to 2.45. And then points of inflection. Well, here there's a point of inflection where it goes from negative to positive. Here, from negative to positive again. What about this in the middle? It's not really a point of inflection, is it? because it's not defined right there. So looking at your graph, you can see it does change from concave up to concave down. That occurs here, but it's not at a point. You know, the inflection changes, but it's not a point of inflection. So what we want to do is we want to find negative 2.45, what the y value is, and positive 2.45, what the y value is. But I cannot take and plug in that number. I have to plug in that entire number, or remember, that's what's on my calculator in the memory right now, okay? So I can go back to my y equals, I can turn this guy on, I can go turn this guy off, and then from there I can graph it, and then I can do calculate value. Now, the inflection point, is it going to be the same? Like this original function is an odd function. If you flip it upside down, it's the same. So when I get this y value for this point of inflection, it's going to be the opposite sign over here. Or you could go find it. Okay. So calculate um, this one here. I just want a value. And I'm going to say second answer. I'm going to plug in that last answer that was just in the memory bank. When you do, you can verify that it is that answer that was plugged in, okay? And then from there, it gives you the y value, negative 0.34, which means this one is going to be positive 0.34 because it's an odd function. Or, again, you could get that number in. You could redo it. Let me show you this way. I could just go calculate value, and I could type this whole number in. 2.449491. Did I get them all? Okay. And then from there, you can see it comes out with that same value that's positive. Okay. So again, you don't have to do that because you can see 
but that's what's happening on the other side of the room. Okay, how about questions on that one? Something you want to ask about? I'm trying to delete this thing. Questions, yes? Yeah. For the test, when we're asking the skip position, is it like really thinking like, like should it be scale B, like almost just like about the shape? About the shape of it, and that it's crossing the x axis or the y axis at you know the right places. But you you have control of those graphs, so you know you can you know say where it is. Okay. But yeah, it's it's basic shape that I'm looking for. Okay. okay. All right. Any other questions on that one? Okay, the second one then is question number four. Oh, good, it's right at the bottom. And it's asking you, the directions are saying, starting with a given x sub 1, but your x sub 1 is 2.5, find the third approximation, x sub 3, to the root of the equation. So you want to make sure here that you are giving enough work, okay? So your work should start out with x sub 1 equals 2.5. And then x sub 2 equals 2.5 minus f of 2.5 divided by f prime of 2.5. Okay. You don't have to give me all the little decimals in between there as long as you give me that. Okay. Now, somewhere on your paper, I'm also going to be looking that your derivative is there. Okay. So somewhere you should have that f prime of x is 3x squared minus 2x minus 2. But I understand you're going to use your calculator a lot to help you on this problem with these decimals because they're nasty, you know, and, and that's why it's on the calculator section. Okay, so with that, now let's go to the calculator. All right, I'm going to put the 2.5 in my brain here. There it is. And now I'm going to say second answer to the third. I'm, I'm doing f of x and then I'll do f prime of x. Get out of the exponent, minus uh, second answer, squared, and then minus 2 times second answer, and then minus 2. What did I, let's see what I did. Okay, there we go, 2.375, okay. So, it's not a bad idea at this point to, to put it down minus, what was it? 2.375. It's not like you have to do like the eighth one. Oh, sorry. I can't talk and write at the same time. Now I need to do F prime of 2.5. So go to your calculator, get the 2.5 back in the brain of your calculator, and now I'm going to do it with this guy here. Three times second answer squared. And then minus 2 times second answer, and then minus 2. And that answer is 11.75. And then at this point, you can just say 2.5 minus, and go get the 2.375, or type it in. I mean, this one isn't very bad that I could have minus, and then second answer, the 11.75. And it gives you, now it's going to start getting nasty with decimals. Okay, so here I should at least see 2.29, whoops, it's not 9, 7, 8, blah, 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 blah. You don't have to write them all down. Write a couple of them, you know. Even if you put 2.29, dot, 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 like that's fine. As long as you understand, you can't use 2.29. If you have to use the entire decimal. So then we get to the final step of this, which is x sub 3 which is that number, 2.29, da, 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 minus f of 2.29, da, 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 over f prime of 2.29. Whoa. Too bad. Okay. The easy thing now is you already have the, the original function and the first derivative typed in. So now from here, I'm just going to go up and pull that original function. It's going to take this answer and plug it in there, as long as that's my last answer. And then I'm going to go up to this function as well, but I need this answer to be back in the brain here. 
located in the brain. Okay, and now I'm going to go up and grab that with the squared, which is the, the derivatives. And it gives me that. So what I could do right now is I could take and say for my work, I could say um, 2.29 da, 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 minus 0.2573 blah, 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 over and then uh, 9.249 blah, 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 blah. I guess there's supposed to be another 4 in there. There we go. But you can do it on your calculator. So I take that 2.29 thing and then minus and then this guy here. Divided by this guy here, second answer. And I get 2.270, so give all of the decimal places to this. Equals 2.270040444. Your decimal places have to match mine all the way out to the end. So don't say 2.27 or I'm going to mark off the point. Very calculator active problem. Questions? All right, and then the last one for today is number 82. Because this guy right here, I'm probably going to write it down. It says find the equation for the slant asymptote. The equation for the slant asymptote, what I need to do is long division, numerator divided by denominator. Do not just take the first term. Okay, a few of you went wrong on this on the quiz as well, which again, I'll be passing back. 2x squared plus, or sorry, 2x cubed. Got to get it down right. 2x cubed plus x squared plus 0x, I'm skipping over an x, divided by x squared. And then you say, you know, what do I multiply by x squared to get 2x cubed. And then you should have 2x, right. And don't put it over here. Make sure it's lined up with your x's. That's how you know when you're done. 2x. 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. Draw your line, change your signs, that guy's gone. Now I have x squared plus 0x plus 1. What do I multiply by x squared to get x squared? 1. I know at this point I'm done because I've reached the end. If I put it over here, I don't understand that I still could go further, okay? 1 times x squared is x squared. Um, draw your line, change your sign. That cancels, that's 0. Your remainder is 1. Your remainder should match my remainder on my paper, okay? But your slant asymptote should have a y equals, and it's whatever the quotient is, 2x plus 1. It didn't ask you to graph it or anything like that. It just asked you to find it. So day one of your test should be pretty simple. Okay. But it's calculator active. So if you mess up on something on the calculator, it's easy to get kind of fumbled up with that kind of stuff. Okay. All right, let me pass your quizzes back.